Today I wanted to talk about how gradient maps work because I've seen some people questioning how they function and how they affect your art so and also I wanted to try making a tutorial so let's get into it. Gradient maps assign colors according to the values present in your image. So starting with these stripes, at the top I have like a basic value bar. This is usually what your gradient map is working off of and I have a light one in a dark one. I chose these colors because red usually is so intense that it ends up darker than the other colors by default. The um, red's local value is pretty dark. And so turn the grayscale on that if we were to use this gradient map on an image, all the darkest values will be red. The next slightest after that will be orange, yellow, green, and so on. The best gradient maps I've found go evenly from dark to light. You can switch it up and get some crazy combinations, but to start off it's easier just to be consistent from dark to light. So these should be okay mostly. The green is darker than yellow, there's really nothing I can do about that, but I probably would switch the yellow to be of the lightest value if this was for an art piece. This is a piece I originally painted in grayscale and decided to use a map instead of coloring it with you know the multiply method and stuff like that I don't do that I just use gradient maps so here's an example of, of how your darkest value will be assigned to the painting regardless of if it's actually the darkest color this gradient map gray was put where black usually is so it is the darkest value so it is covering the darkest part of the image and that includes the lips and the shadow and the hair and everything Okay, so now I'm going to go over ways your gradient map can look bad, and that is basically an incentive of what I said earlier, your values not being even across the map, if that's not what you want. If that's what you want and it works, then there's no issue. But for this, this painting is very light, and there are only slight value changes until you get to parts like her jacket. Her jacket's darker than the rest of her outfit and her headband, but nothing else should be this dark, like the shadows and things. So it feels very dark, this whole piece, and it's not a dark piece at all, it's very light. So I push all the dark values back, I might even get rid of some of them, so that everything else can even out. Bring out some of those lights again. So now you can see the image more clearly, and you can see that the only dark parts are the actual dark values in the painting. I'm going to turn this off so you can see. So you can see only the jacket and the shoes and the headband are really dark and everything else is in that middle range. So it should be the same for your gradient map if that's what you're going for. And you can also combine gradient maps to get cool effects. So I put this one on top with one that had yellow in it. Yellow and blue and pink, that's basically the primary, primary colors. So. I like this one too because of the purple, and if you don't want the full effect of a gradient map, you can always lower the opacity and get the soft glow that I love. And you can also mix them with color modes, not color modes, layer modes, to change it up. And that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go with that for now. Now, if you're using Procreate, all of this is mostly the same, but the location of these things is different, and you might have to change the way you organize your layers. Gradient maps on Procreate only work on the layer with the art on it. You can't create it outside of it and then clip it on there. It won't let you, unfortunately. So you have to either take a chance or sacrifice to make sure you get it, get it right the first time or just co copy, paste, make two layers, one for safety. So you can delete the gradient map if it doesn't look good. And at the bottom of Procreate, you have to create your own gradient maps. I'm sure there's a way to import them. I don't do that. I just make my own when I'm on Procreate. And you have to delete them and move them around and things like that. And if you need to check your values before you use a gradient map to make sure you're putting the colors in the correct place, you can create an extra layer, fill it with black, and then change the layer mode to color so you can see where everything falls. So I just wanted to take a moment to show you why I think using the color mode is best to see what your values are. This is on the right, this is what it looks like when the gradient map is applied to the normal painting. On the right is what it looks like when you have it under the colored grayscale and you see that the photos match and so what happens if you put it under the other ones, for example the grayscale gradient map, see how much darker it turned it and then 
now everything in the background is black because of it. So if I turn that off and then I put the unadjusted one on, again it makes it really dark in the background and so you get more black in there. Which is a look actually, I think this is pretty cool. Just being aware of the changes you're making make, is what gives you power in your art to create. So that's why I just wanted to show, show y'all this because I thought it was pretty cool and what happens if you use the hue slider to remove color and saturation instead to it makes it really light it doesn't keep the darkness so I just thought that was pretty cool and I wanted to show that so in addition to gradient maps being able to create cool unique new color combinations that you might not have normally tried on your own it can also be used to create conventional things that you would want to try and maybe you want to save yourself some time and if you're working on a comic you definitely want to save yourself some time so for you procreate people, here's a little cheat sheet for things like times of day, sunset, night, um, sunrise, and you can either download these by finding it, I don't know where it is, because I, I, as I said earlier, I don't download Gradient Mouse for Procreate, but um, if you want to add these to yours, all you have to do is open the Gradient Map, go to the bottom, add a new one, and then for each little node down there, change the color to match what is on the screen right now. If you're new, it might take a minute to get used to it, but I promise it's going to be worth the effort in the end, and you'll be able to just pop that baby in there. Remember, you don't have to always keep it at full color. If you don't want the full blast of the sun in your character's eyes, you can turn it down a little bit. If you want the full effect of these times of day changes, I would definitely suggest doing some rim lighting and some overlay or add glows to really bring out the different colors and the light from the sun, that really brings it out. A uh, quick disclaimer, my comic doesn't look like this. I don't do full color like this, I do flats. So don't go uh, clicking the link in the description or anything thinking you're gonna get this beautifulness because it doesn't exist there, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it doesn't exist. So one more thing real quick before we go, I wanted to show what happens when you put a dark color in the area where the light colors are supposed to be. It looks kind of murky and muddy, huh? I'm sure it can work, but it can look a little crazy if that's not what you're going for. You don't want craziness, then this isn't for you. But I wanted to share it anyway, because I like messing with the gradient maps and the colors and moving them around just to see what happens, even if it doesn't look good. But that's all I had for today. Um, I did my best. If you guys still have any questions, feel free to comment below. If I was confusing at any points, let me know so I can like improve in the future. And uh, see you next week, I guess.